I know I'm mistreating this brush hog, but this thing is beefed up. It is 10 years old or more, and uh, that's what I've designed it to do. And again, I'm willing to fix it if it breaks. But you're gonna see me transform this area because it's, it's just a lot of stuff in there that otherwise you're just gonna have to get in there and manually do. So directly in front of the tractor, there's a little burn that I created when we seeded this pasture. I want to get that nice and flat and smooth. Eventually this will all be mowable by a zero turn, but for right now, I've, I'm still got to work on it and get it level and get grass established everywhere. Okay, so I got a bunch of brush hogging done in between those pines and I found as I'm going in between these trees, you know, I'm, I'm tending to hit them a little bit with the loader or hit them a little bit with the brush hog and I knew that was a possibility, but I didn't get in as tight as I wanted to in all the areas because of that. And this brush hog is able to do a lot of things that other ones can and it's not because it's some magical special brush hog, it's because I've broken it so many times when I had it built back up, I had it built back up stronger. The actual tailwheel assembly, you'll see that the metal is double thick on the end. Right there, you can see a piece of metal welded and bent all the way around the end. That's because I broke off my tailwheel. So that's number one. When you're backing up over big brush, you tend to get your tailwheel stuck. You tend to bend this portion right here, this uh, knob that's sticking up, that tends to bend. Uh, the actual, you see the, the fork that comes down that's supports the wheel that will get bent um, if you don't keep it greased the, the bearing or the shaft that the wheel rides on which would be right there that will wear on one side more than the other so this is probably the third if not the fourth tail wheel that this brush hog has had in addition to having this welded it is the second drive shaft i think pto shaft that it's had but the reason you can back up with this bush hog that you can't with a standard king cutter is this right here is all extra thick steel and even this is bent a little but this is not original to this brush hog i had that made by a machine shop and so all this is probably i wouldn't say double as thick as original but it's definitely at least an eighth of an inch thicker so because of that when you're pushing on these pins right on either side of the your lower control arms there of your three-point hitch you're pushing this way and when you push that way and that goes up against a tree or this edge goes against dirt if the bush hog stops these tend to turn and bend your frame and that happened on the original frame here so it's been beefed up and then probably the most important thing is on a bush hog or a brush hog is that this is that this funnel you see this piece of metal right here about 18 inches long or so comes in at an angle when you hit things on a standard brush hog will bend under and when it bends under it hits the blade of the brush hog so that happened to me for a long time with this one and finally I had this whole side rebuilt and all of this metal to include this gusset right here and then that metal down there and then the metal that it actually rides on on the front corner that is all extra metal you'll see a gusset right there and that keeps this corner or this funnel from caving in under the brush hog what i'm going to do now is i got some i got a dead oak tree right there that one's dead then i got a double oak here and that's not allowing that one to canopy so i'm either going to leave that double oak or take that little one in between take that one out right there
these pine trees I just took down were another example of small scrawny scraggly trees that are never going to amount to anything and when you look up they couldn't even canopy and they were actually growing towards the pasture because the taller pines behind them were shading them out so I cut them down I don't have the excavator today so I don't have the thumb to help me pick these up so I've just cut them up into lengths I think that'll fit in the bucket and then I'll go dump them in a pile somewhere but now would be a good time to have a grapple but I don't have one you got to see this to believe it every single piece of wood came out of the bucket not 50% not 75% but every single one rolled out of the bucket let's try this again Well, I managed to get that load into the woods and dump it without dropping it again. But I was pretty frustrated after that fell out. I mean, the whole thing fell out too. What I'm going to do next is go in this little section here. Our front gate is over my right shoulder. And then you can see to the left where the tractor is. Well, I wasn't going to try and cut this tree. It's the one that's been hit by the bulldozer years ago, and it's a pine tree. It's kind of half dead on the bottom. You know, it's got half a trunk going all the way up, but I got power lines running along here, along the road. And if it falls on, if it falls on the power lines, that's bad. If it falls on my fence, that's bad. So I've got some pressure with the tractor pushing it that way, and I also have a north wind, so it's coming this way. So I think I'm good. Even if it doesn't fall exactly where I want it to, it should fall parallel with my road here and never hit the power line. But this tree's got to go. Now's as good a time as any to take it down. So yeah, it hung up like I thought it would. Look at this thing. I cut it off there, hoping it would fall in between these trees, but it couldn't get past that one. So it's leaning the right way. Not sure what to do next. Okay, she's down. That tree definitely needed to come down. Maybe not necessarily the way I did it, but it's down. Nothing was injured. No tractor, chainsaw, people, power lines, or my fence was injured so uh we'll call that a good day we'll call that a win 